The following is a public service announcement. Hey everyone, welcome to the Horror PSA presented by Scary Nerd. And as always, we are your hosts. I'm Paul. I'm Saul. And I'm Angie. That's right, everyone. We watched Shocker from 1989, the Wes Craven uh, underrated, I guess I would call it. I don't know. We're looking to do more of his uh, underrated movies for this month, which is August, and it's his birthday month. Less appreciated. Less appreciated. Yeah, less appreciated. Well, yeah, I'll call him what you will, but (laughs) we watched Shocker, and uh, if you've never seen this one, it is a doozy, folks. Um, Let me read this plot to you real quick, all right? After being sent to the electric chair, a serial killer uses electricity to come back from the dead and carry out his vengeance on the football player who turned him into the police. And that doesn't even describe how (laughs) uh, just crazy this movie is. I don't know. What would you call it? Yeah. Uh, It's all over the place. A fever dream. a fever dream. A fever dream. Okay, the, it's I, like when you're sick and with a fever, I, and you okay. hallucinate. <laughs> I so it's Wizard of Oz to you. Yes, it's interesting. I guess Pinker's the I don't yes. know the the witch. The I guess? wicked witch. I don't know. Yes. Um, I saw this movie when I was a kid, and I didn't remember a lot of it. But uh, so it's basically revisiting for me. Um, Saul, had you seen this before? I did not, but I do remember the poster in my comic books when I was a kid reading those so when we did this i saw the i saw the the cover for it of him sitting in the electric chair with the orange jumpsuit and the checkered thing across his chest and i have vivid memories of seeing that that in my comic books and kind of being wanting to know what it was about but then not really wanting to know what it was just being a dumb kid back then but yeah this was my first time watching it yeah, I had never seen it. This was I had seen the cover of it, like, you know, passing it in Blockbuster or Hollywood video or whatnot. I feel yeah, I feel the cover. Yeah, the, yeah the I remember the way cover. more popular than the actual movie is. Yeah. Yeah. But this was my first watch and uh boy howdy folks. Was it a good time? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I wanna get into the characters in this movie really quick. So um we have Michael Murphy, who plays Lieutenant Dan Parker, who's uh, Jonathan's <laughs> dad. And you will remember him from X-Men The Last Stand. I think he was a senator somebody, a Republican senator guy. The, the one that had the kid that was the, I don't remember his the name. Angel the Angel Wings The Angel Wings one. Wings one. Yeah, yeah, he was the dad. That's where I remembered him from. Um, okay, he was also, I, uh, I think he was the mayor in Batman Returns as well. So those will probably okay. be the two that you remember him most okay. from. But he's one of those guys that's been in a million things if you go down his IMDb list. Um, Mitch Pileggi, who we all know is Walter Skinner from X-Files. Yep. Uh, he plays the yep. serial killer Horace Pinker in this movie. It and it's so weird to see it him is, in It is role. weird to see them, especially if you grew up watching him uh, on X-Files and then you see this yeah. movie. Yeah. You're like, what the hell? Like he's, <laughs> yep. it's, he, he has range, we'll just say. Right? He's got some range. I don't know. You can make a face when I... Okay. Would we say that? That he is right. <laughs> okay. And then Jonathan Parker is played by Peter Berg. And he has um, probably, I think, uh, about 50 or so acting credits on his list. And none of them are really like big movies. Um, probably the most prominent you would remember him from is he was in Fire in the Sky. Um, he was one of the loggers in that movie. And um, the great white hype that he played um, with, he was a boxer in that movie. He played with Samuel L. Jackson in that movie. Yeah, but he, that. but looking him up, he is actually a huge like writer, director, and producer in Hollywood still. So he's worked this this whole time. He wrote and directed that uh, Spencer Confidential movie that is uh, with Mark Wahlberg and Post Malone that was on Netflix. Um, he also directed Mark Wahlberg in uh, Lone Survivor, and he also did that Hancock movie. He was a director for that too. With I Will guess. Smith? Well, yeah, Will Smith oh, and wow. Charlie Theron. So yeah, he's actually been like kind of behind the scenes and like just consistently working. But and his co-star is Camille Cooper, who plays his girlfriend Alex. And almost I is thought it was crazy. Allison. Is it Alice? Okay. Allison. It is Allison. Did Allison. I say Alice? Okay. Oh, of course. Yeah. Um, she plays Allison, his girlfriend, and. She has only 12 acting credits on her IMDb page. So she acted in a dozen things and then got out. She actually is the vice president of public policy 
as of 2019 of an organization called Rain, and it's and they help women. And she actually spearheaded the Protect Our Children Act of 2008, which was to give innovation and technology to law enforcement agencies to kind of combat like sexual crimes. And she spearheaded that, and it was actually signed into law in 2008 by President Bush. So kind of a weird career this lady has had. You know, she was in this random movie. I think this was her first credit, actually, or one of the few. And then, you know, now she's gone on from acting and done, like, some great work in politics, I guess. So that is about as bad shit crazy as this movie, I would think. So... Yeah. All right, so we okay. get into this crazy TV repairman. Shocker! <laughs> I'm going to keep doing that, man. This, the, okay, that's going to be my, oh, that hurts my parts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> we haven't had a good one of those in a while. 2020, there it is. It's 2020, shocker. yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Oh my God. Yeah, Someone, wrote, someone's going to listen to this podcast and get that stuck in their head, and then they're going to be just around their family like, shocker! Like, shocker! what the fuck is the matter with you? Sorry, Grandma. I wrote super sweet shocker song. <laughs> every, you time you keep going, every time you keep yelling shocker, all I think of is that game when I was a kid of Crossfire. Crossfire. I don't know why. <laughs> That's the only thing I keep thinking of when you say shocker. Oh. Okay, you know a movie, an 80s horror movie, is going to be good when it has its own rock theme song. Oh, yeah. As soon as you hear yeah. its own individualized theme song, you know when there's a shit is about to go down. Big-haired metal band singing your theme song, this movie is oh, going to be excellent. There were so many yeah. big hair bands in this movie. <laughs> there was even a big yes. hair metal guitarist in the movie, yes. so you know it's going to be good. Oh, 1989, yeah. this... The late 80s, early 90s are just full of films that were just going through growing pains. And it wasn't anybody's fault. It was just the time of it was just the time of the 1980s, like late 80s to early 90s. You just had so many yeah. growing pains with style, you know, stylistic choices in directing, CGI, computer animation and all that shit. Wow. And it's just perfectly I... solidified into this perfect time capsule in Shocker. I think it was just one of those things, too, where it was a victim or a success of its time period. Like you said, you can you can smell the 80s from this movie. Mm -hmm. What, some 30 years later? Yeah, it's it's an, it's a total 80s movie. Yeah. Even, even like, seeing this movie as a kid, I was like, what the hell, man? Because <laughs> I was buying it up until one point, and then I'm like, really? Was it oh, the yeah. lips? Yeah. Was it the lips part? That you were buying it up to <laughs> which lips part? <laughs> the lips part where the lips come out and say, "You got it, baby." <laughs> oh no 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 no! It was when they start getting when they start doing the stay tuned thing when they were in the TV with the remote. And oh, all the that. Willy Wonka acid oh. trip because yes. that's what I call it. Yeah. <laughs> Even as a kid, okay, I was here's... like, "All right, man, come on, this is... <laughs> wow." Like... I'm gonna admit this: I like this movie up to a point. I thought. Up until, do we just want to get into the part where, where I, I want to refer to, or do we want to get later on to it? This movie is so fucking crazy. Let's just jump in wherever you want to jump in. We can talk about whatever Here, you want to talk about. Here's where the movie had me, and I, and I was liking it up until the scene with the uh, the tower, the TV tower, when they get up there. Oh, yeah? Because I'm thinking, okay, gone, this what movie's... Is, what did he say? I've gone prime thinking, time, baby. I've gone prime yeah, I'm thinking, time. Okay, Nationwide. This is where... It's like I'm thinking, okay, this is where like all the eighties movies have their trope of you're gonna have the final battle and this is gonna end the movie. But no, there's still like another half hour. Oh yeah, it fakes you fact. out. It tries to fake you yeah. out a few times. So the first time you think the movie's gonna end, but then later on in the movie you just want the movie to end. <laughs> yeah. I'm like I that whole everything after the the tower scene, I'm thinking Okay, they realize shit. We can't finish a movie with only like an hour in. We still need to fill more time. So they're like, let's just do this. Which to me, that completely lost me. The whole of the whole thing of them jumping in and out of the TV. I'm like, what the fuck is this? That's what lost us all. <laughs> <laughs> it took you that long to get lost in this movie. I, this movie, like I, I said, swear, I, if he was still alive, I'd be like, what's Craven? Were you on drugs? Yeah. It was the 80s. Man. Were you on drugs? Yeah. Was, was Coke the reason for this yeah, yeah. movie? 
<laughs> I don't, I I don't want to say that he did coke, but I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be either. I wouldn't, everybody I think, did in the 80s, and it right? It wouldn't change my opinion of him either. So, yeah. I, don't well, know. I mean, everybody loves Stephen King, and we, he was a coke Stephen fiend, King knows, man. like, we all know, yeah. like, he's told everybody about yeah, his nose he's, bleeds. He has no shit. bones about <laughs> yeah. it. I mean, he's like, hey, that's who I was. It was so. the 80s. I don't know. It everybody was, there. was doing it. <laughs> Me, but, Wes, yeah, been, George, we were all there. We were all there. <laughs> Up until that point, that's where I was. I was. I was okay with it, but then it just went like complete left field. I'm like, "What the fuck am I watching now?" So this whole movie was left field. So we're talking about yeah. the opening. We're talking about the crazy TV repairman that is. Uh, what was this person? Horace. It was, it was Horace, the, uh, Pinker. Horace Pinker. It was his Freddie Glove. His Freddie Glove moment. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, that's the other thing about it, though. Too is after I got done watching, I'm like, it gave me a lot of. Nightmare on Elm Street vibes. Oh, yeah. There was but a ton me, of themes regurgitated but, in this film. But to me, it was like a poor man's Nightmare on Elm Street, even though it was Wes Craven. See, I felt like this was a 90s man's Elm Street. Okay. It's interesting that you say that because um, I read in the IMDb trivia that he was hoping that this could take over as a new franchise because he was upset with the way that Freddy had gotten all campy. Uh-oh. Really? And then when it, it <laughs> received his answer to it? when it received such poor reception, that was kind of canceled. Yeah, that, see, that's funny to me that that's that was his response to it. It's like he thought Freddie got so campy that I'm like he went did, to this, camp. This is, this yeah. is your follow up. It's like how is this not just as bad as how campy Freddie got? Yeah, because this, this was, movie, this movie had oh some cheesy ass one liners. We did have baby Ted Raimi in it though. Mm-hmm. Yes, we did. It's, it was Theodore in this movie. <laughs> it's Theodore. He's just a baby, <laughs> just a baby Ted Raimi. Back yeah. from selling his condoms in Florida. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I forgot about him in that movie. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so we settle on to our main character who is playing football. He's he gives such, himself a concussion. He's such a vanilla character. <laughs> The most vanilla character, like yeah. What do you want him to be like? I don't know. I wanted some depth. I guess <laughs> you want depth. In this? I'm sorry. Did you come into Shocker <laughs> after? Did hey, I? Did you? Did we Heather do, Langenkamp. Did we had watch depth Okay, we didn't even talk about Nancy. it. Nancy. She is credited before Peter Berg, who plays Jonathan, the main guy, the main character. She yeah. was credited before him on IMDb, and I'm like, you don't even see her in no. the movie. That's she's what technically me. not even in the movie nope. because she's it's in background the character. shit out of me. Because I think yeah. like, she is, and I'm pretty sure the shot that I saw that was most clear is you see her because the camera is pointing at a TV and she's watching the news at the time. So she's the yeah. victim on the news that you're seeing in the movie. So I'm like, you're in the movie, but it's not even like... You don't even have any lines, but I'm like, why was she credited before him? Like, this is so weird because like nobody knew you who he was. You don't even really back then. see her like, face; like, she's facing away. Yeah, Whoa. it's real quick. Like, you have to, you will miss it. You will miss it. I missed it the first that time. Can, yeah, the, the hell out of me because when I looked at the IMDb like you did, I saw her name on there. Like, when the fuck was she in this? Yeah, and then you get into and this I, movie, and it's like it's so fucking crazy. You're like, wait. Wasn't Heather Langenkamp supposed to be in this movie? Yeah. <laughs> so we meet our main character, and he gives himself a concussion and has to be in the watched. stupidest way ever, too. He's a football player who apparently doesn't know where the goalpost is. <laughs> oh my god! I saw that happen. I'm like, this guy's a fucking idiot. How yeah. do you not know where the goalpost is? Coach is gonna cream your ass. I, yeah, that's I love, one of those lines. I loved all these oh. cheesy. Like, who wrote this dialogue? He, okay, I don't want to say yeah. again. I don't want to say Wes Craven was on coke, but whoever. <laughs> coach gonna cream your ass. I know. I'm like, oh, coach. And I love that coach's reaction. Like, man, you look like shit. Why don't you just go home early? And I'm like, he probably has a concussion. And then he falls over a table, and they're like, all right, she'll take him home. That's fine. She's good. She's got it. You got this, Alice. Don't worry. It's Allison. It's Allison. Well, What's you there? know. Well, here's the thing. You know he got a concussion because when he says Allison's girlfriend comes out to him and starts talking to him, he has no idea who the fuck she is. I'm thinking to myself, get this kid some medical attention because he's got a head injury. He's got a little bit of amnesia. He's got, I don't know, maybe like a grade three or four concussion. This kid is not well. There are a couple things in there that I don't know what Wes was thinking. And the whole angle with Allison is one of them. Like, it shows them like she's like I'm gonna walk you home, and then it shows them walking home, and we don't know it yet, but he's in a dream. 
Yeah. And there's no segue. Yeah. There's, there's, it's okay. just automatic. So I'm like, right. was there a lot of studio like interference on this that made it got choppy or something? Okay. Um, I will, I will point this out and, um, I would love to know more about this, but apparently they had to resubmit it to the MPAA like a bunch of times hmm. and keep cutting it more and more just to get the R rating. So I'm wondering if there is like perhaps a like craven a direct cut? a craven <gasps> cut that I actually cut. where this movie actually makes fucking sense. <laughs> I know it was missing a lot of sense. That's, so that's I mean, what I would here. love to know that, and like I don't know who we'd call or talk to about that, but there may be. I mean, I don't know. I mean, it could be nothing. I mean, but I'm saying if they had to cut it that many times, I don't remember how many times it said, but I mean. Even a few, like you can even see this movie, like, all right, there is some choppy shit in here. Yeah. It's like, don't make sense. Like the dreams. Yeah. And, uh, the dreams. So he, he walks into a dream, crime scene, magically, of his family. <laughs> and I love that he just completely ignores that Allison is gone. Like he turns yeah. around and is like, Allison. And then he's like, all right, I'm just going to keep going and hear them. Mm-hmm. Well, the weird thing about that thing, too, is when you see the kids running, all of a sudden they disappear. I'm like, what the fuck happened to those kids? Yeah. And it was yeah. all like, it, there was a lot of themes in this that I was like, "Is are we shooting a music video? Is that <laughs> the look we're going for? Because I've seen these 90s music yeah. videos before. <laughs> okay, think of this whole movie as Jonathan got a concussion and then just started fucking murdering people. Yeah. And he created yeah. he created he, Horus. A fever dream. He created Horus out of yeah, that even, nothing. There, mm-hmm. was, there was no Horus. He was the Horus. But yeah. he sees that Horus is... Right, about to kill his mother and his sister, but it's okay. He wakes up safe in his water bed. <laughs> Later on. Yeah. Here's my question about okay. Here's my question like, about why? Horace. Though. Why is there a water bed? So Horace sees Jonathan in the dreams, right? Yeah, and he talks to him. Yeah, but is okay. So this is obviously not happening in real time when no. he when he has that right. <laughs> so. Is Horace just in the van dreaming while he's like <laughs> about to go? I'm gonna go slaughter these people, but I gotta dream about it first. There's no, there's no explanation. <laughs> ah shit. He's there's no continuity. Up. I mean, yeah. you can't well. expect continuity with a waterbed in the movie. <laughs> I mean, too many things just. That's moved. the dream off edge of the waterbed. Like, the waterbed. Seriously? Okay, I just it has to be said a waterbed was the worst invention in all of history. Okay, nobody should be sleeping on a big bag of water. It's stupid. And now kids yeah, play with them outside on hot summers. <laughs> they yeah. do. Yeah. That's basically those things. They just fill them up with water. I don't understand, though. As a director, would you want a waterbed in your movie? Like, Why does the waterbed thing throw you <gasps> off so much? I like, just of hate all the them. things okay. in this movie, I just of hate all them the so things much. in this movie, the fucking waterbed is where. Because <laughs> yes. I'm like, why does Allison get to come back? How? Let's answer this question. How does Allison get to bring you? Sh- this isn't fucking nightmare. All right, Wesley. Oh. Why does Jonathan, why is he afraid of Allison every single time? Even <laughs> though every know. time she's like, look, I just want to help you and maybe have sex finally because we never got she to. She is very aggressive yeah. about trying to And even that last time, the like they're making out, he's like, why do I have to go? She's like, I don't want you to go either. I but know. God like the it. ghosts have to show up and like, hey guys, why don't you stop boning right now? And uh, Horace <laughs> is still over there. He's about to, you Wait know, sneak up on you. Don't let him catch you sleeping. I'm like, really? They just walked in on two on this ghost and this human boning right now. And they're yeah. like, hey, you have other shit to <laughs> hey, attend to. Hey, <laughs> motherfucker. You need to avenge our death. And why, what was with oh, their, like... Gosh. They were zombies. Well, their zombie-like yeah. weird band march. They were all equally Whoa. spread <laughs> apart. Know, yeah. And I'm like, what is going on? Why are you marching great, in unison? There was some great choreography in that scene. In that scene alone. <laughs> this movie is so fucking crazy. <laughs> so crazy. We haven't even got break- into the movie yet. I was waiting for them to do break out into a thriller dance when they started walking up on them. No, the but they, they whispered yeah. to him. Outtakes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. I'm good now. Like they have yeah. a conversation. He has a conversation with ba- baby Ted Raimi. And you tell my mom I'm good. I don't know who you are. Clear my browser history. Oh wait, that wasn't that was a like thing. Eighty nine. <laughs> Get no, the magazine out. Clean out my bed. sock drawer. <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> Ew, <laughs> crusty socks, gross. I didn't mean like that, but <laughs> that's, that's, where, that's, that's where, where your head went. 
Why would you? you so yeah. If anyway, you're, if you're so, lazy, then yeah, you'll so. throw the sock and the magazine back in the drawer and not separate. Yeah, I anyway, guess. Anyway, this whole kid's family gets murdered, That's right? What he would sees do. them get murdered, and then uh, as, as he goes to the crime scene, his dad is there. Oh, like there's a, a, day. a news anchor who just starts trying to interview the family. I know. Was that a <laughs> thing? Was that a thing in the 80s where news reporters would just or walk all over the crime thing? scene? Yeah, yeah I, like, I want to know that because every you movie has that. The, you guys recognize the news anchor, right? No, I didn't even focus on him. You didn't recognize the news anchor? Uh-uh. It was John T- It was John Tesh. The only thing I could keep hearing and throw my head. Oh, okay. I th- I th- no, we, the- I thought you meant the one that was at the house, not the oh, not no, the no, other no. one. Okay, yeah. No. Yeah, like, we recognize John Tesh. Yeah. Yeah, because that's the only thing that kept going through my head was the Entertainment Tonight song and yeah. the NBA on TV, TN, uh, NBA on NBC thing. It was random that he was in. I, I, I wanted yeah. to be like, was he not big at this point or was he big at this point? And it was just weird for him to be in it because it's weird to me either way. And, you know, now, yeah. it's, but I mean, who knows what he was like in the, you know, 89, I guess. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Yeah, this is how crazy bad shit this movie was. Yeah, you take little solace in the fact that you're like, I know that dude. That's John Tish. So Jonathan says, "Hey, Dad, let's go drink and talk about how I saw the murders at some bar." <laughs> and I love, I love how I love how Lieutenant Dan at first was just like, "Yeah, we all have dreams about a kid. You'll be all right." I know, and he's like, "No, I could smell the blood." I was like, "Gross! What's wrong with you?" And then somehow he convinces him to. Like he knows where he at, where he See, is, and he saw. Yeah, he's like, I saw the van. I could take you to where he works. See, this is this is the first sign where Jonathan's like, I'm trying to confess, I'm killing. <laughs> Paul's trying to write a different movie again. He's trying to we're, confess okay, to the but dad. That's not what we're talking he's about. We're trying talking to make about... He's trying to confess, but when the lieutenant Dan doesn't believe him, that's when we, he's like, Fine, I'll take you to the guy. We are talking about. And Wes the Craven. Setup persona begins. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's a it's a Tyler Durden scenario here. It's what's yeah. going on. Tyler Durden scenario. He's he's not sleeping well because the concussions and it's yeah. It's just it's it's yeah. Oh, so they take him to the TV repair shop, which is a time a time capsule in and of itself. Do are there yeah. even still a thing? Do people still take their TVs to repair shops? Or you got to ship there... it back to the manufacturer these yeah. days? <laughs> Do we, would know. anyone think about even, you know, getting it repaired? Or be like, all right, it's time to buy a new TV. I know. You just get a new one. Like, what's wrong days. with it? I don't know. It doesn't work. <laughs> you know, buy a new one. That's what they would tell you. We and don't I, repair them. We just sell you new ones. We just ones. sell you new ones. Who does that anymore? Jeez. Repair you we get to, things? We get to see that Pinker is, A, a master of disguise, and B, he's into what I like to call catsidermy. Oh, see, I Thank wrote, yeah. I wrote uh, typical psycho porn on all of his TVs. You oh, know, the, war, bombs, the destruction. The Vietnam footage yeah. and the KKK rallies. Yeah, the psycho porn. I, I think there's I just stock footage. Yeah, there's just stock footage of psycho porn for Hollywood to use mm. somewhere, I yeah. swear. And it's all that green, like that green hue. Hey, Marge, the Craven <laughs> production needs the psycho porn reel the again. the psycho porn, please. <laughs> okay. I love how when they get there, the other cop is telling his boss, "Hey, can we really do this? This is breaking and entering." Oh yeah, like, motherfucker. Let, yeah, I, like, I think I wrote down like, "Let's just add a little probable cause here." And okay, we're good. <laughs> Got your crowbar, <laughs> Jimmy. Sure thing, Sarge. Mm-hmm. But the cop stops working. He stops looking around, and he lights up a cigarette. And he he, he breaks a cardinal rule: you never forget about secret doors. So if you ever find yourself in a horror movie, folks. Don't forget about the secret doors. They're always hiding just behind the secret doors. And Wes Craven loves secret doors. Apparently. Yeah, it's two <laughs> weeks in a row. It is two weeks in a row. Yeah. Uh, but I love the scene. I don't know why they, like, when they fi- figure out the cop is missing and they see that pool of blood, like, yeah. come out from under the door. Like, they're like, oh, God. Like, it's so much. And I'm like, that ain't even that much blood. I know. And then when you <laughs> and then when you get the fucking door open, like, there's just a little bit on his neck. I know. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. It's not even that much. I'm like, either his uniform would have been covered. So like, yeah, okay. So Pinker had to get him naked first and yeah. then slash his and throat. And then slash his throat. Yeah. Fucking weird. <laughs> <laughs> the thing that didn't make sense to me is that he told the other cop to run out and call for backup. I'm like, shouldn't you have a fucking radio on you to begin with? Nope. They had to go all apparently, the way back out is, to the car. In apparently in 1989, you had to go back out to the car and then sit on the hood for the, the best reception. <laughs> Otherwise, it wouldn't work. Ch- 
And then those other two idiot cops with their back turned to I know. I'm like, the why don't scene? why don't yeah. we look at the you know the building we're supposed to be covering, you know? And I, then because I mean he could have literally just went the other way and gone out, but yeah. you know, he wanted to kill them, so yeah. Plus, he wanted his own van. He's like, well, I got to kill these guys in my own van. So. <laughs> I know. And I was like, how the fuck is limping Mitch Pileggi or Horace Pinker taking out four cops all on his own? <laughs> and then he has the balls yeah. to take his own van with his own fucking name on it. He does. Just to be yeah. like, you know who I am. I'm still driving this fucking van. <laughs> he doesn't even take the cop car. <laughs> is he still taking TV repair calls on his fucking... Right? He's out making money. Yeah. He's on working his... and shit. He's like, all right, I'm here to fix your TV. <laughs> like, Why are you all sweaty and bloody? Uh, Don't co- ask questions. Costume party. That's why I'm wearing this cop's uniform. Oh, my goodness. I loved, though, when... Um, I there's this weird shot when um, after all the stuff with Horace Pinker goes down and it's back to Jonathan's apartment and it's Jonathan and Allison and all you hear is Jonathan grunting and at first yeah. it, like it focuses on the empty bed so I was like were you trying to make us think that they were fucking <laughs> and <laughs> like, then it, and yeah and then yeah, it, and then it goes I was like, what the hell's going on and then it goes over to to Allison in, in the, the bath, bath by herself yeah. like is she the one doing the I know uh, no because like, it, so it's clearly Jonathan so I was like is he beating off like are we gonna uh, settle upon uh, him beating uh, off uh, I mean it's not the first time that that's uh, happened uh, in one of our horror movies that we have watched well, so this, it's this wasn't written by Eli Roth it so wasn't no, there was no beating off in this movie but I was I was like no but nope he's just working out you know you got to release tension somehow <laughs> well I don't know are they religious or something why haven't know. they had sex with, with each other know. because they he wakes up from his first dream and she stayed there and just was like all right well, let's just go to sleep then. <laughs> clearly Allison regrets it after she I dies because she's just horny in the afterlife she's like you son, like, of, a you son of a bitch oh. and she's got to settle for Ted Raimi so. hey I'd be mad yeah. too if I had died without having an orgasm that'd be a tragedy uh, how do you know she wasn't get, diddling herself in that shower oh it's true girls gotta get it somehow See, she was the one. <laughs> yeah, so my my thing is totally thought they were fucking. Uh, and I, okay, how what's does, with the massage chair? That's another. One of my I know. Notes. What like, is I with love, his massage said, chair? What is it? How it said massage o matic. <laughs> yeah. Everything back in the day was o matic. Oh, you you write you put whatever it is the prefix followed by o matic. Mm-hmm. They were geniuses. How does he afford day. all this shit? As okay, a college we, student. Okay, no, we we learned from uh, the news footage and all that, and like you know the the fucking transition shots of the news stories and all that about when they're burying the parents and the or the brother and sister or whatever. Uh, we learned that he was beaten to death, left for dead at seven years old, and Lieutenant Dan and his wife were his foster parents this whole time, right? Mm-hmm. So now he's renting his own like one bedroom house, basically. And he has the massage matic and a car and all this shit. He gives his girlfriend a gold necklace and says, thanks for sticking around after his family was murdered. I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, that's a nice gesture. Like, hey, I, you know, there's a serial killer out looking for me and, you know, he murdered my whole family. And then he leaves her bitch ass alone in his apartment yeah. after he spends like 10 minutes just sitting there thinking like should i go after he hears the it's news practice it's not anything he... important well hey hey we <laughs> learned from the thing that he's pledged to play on saturday damn it he made yeah. a pledge but no he sat there for 10 minutes and listens to the radio news where it's like oh he killed another one even though they know who the fuck he is he's he killed some people this morning. again yeah he just got up and ate breakfast and killed five people so Watch out, Jonathan! All right, but nope. Go to oh practice. Leave your girlfriend alone and inept in your apartment. In your apartment, not even like her apartment. Yeah. In your no. apartment. Well, maybe oh. they live together. I don't know. They never explained it, did they? I also made a no. note about why is his bathroom so steamy? Because every time they're in his yeah. bathroom, it's so steamy. <laughs> it's, it's bad ventilation. What do you want? I don't know. Oh, death is what. And then she proceeds to get murdered. Violently you murdered. Coming. You knew it was coming. Like uh-huh. Paul said, the dude's just sitting there in his driveway, listening to his radio. I'm like, she's gonna fucking die. Like she, he, dude's in the house. She's gonna die. Yep, I wrote that's, that's on exactly everyone. That's on everyone. That's yeah. on Jonathan. That's on jo- Don. That's on the newspapers. That's on everybody who was just like, let's I just leave it, this bitch alone. And 
Like, I thought it was fucked up how when they did the whole news thing and they went out of their way to mention that it was Jonathan who tipped them off to yeah. who it was. Like, it was Jonathan. Really yeah, have- I think I, yeah, I think I wrote down like it was Jonathan who happens to live at 425 Maple <laughs> exactly, Avenue. Exactly. That's pretty much what they did. <laughs> but he's got practice at 9 p.m. or 9 a.m. or whatever the fuck she said. And then I love how when he gets back home, he just walks through an active crime scene and not one fucking cop stops him. I know. Him. No, no, you hear the other cops. <laughs> Maybe we should get his dad. Should, should get his somebody? Dad. Should we? Uh, somebody get his, get his dad. It's like no, you guys didn't stop anyone. I know. And, and even when the dad gets, he's like, "Why the fuck did you guys just stop him?" I know. <laughs> At any time, somebody could have been like, no. "Why'd you let him see that shit? You stupid." Anybody could have just been like, "No, no, kid, you don't want to see this." This is how you say no, people. You just say yes. no. <laughs> yes. no. Don't do it. <laughs> no. Bad. Whoa, 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 whoa. Stop. <laughs> Before you go in there. Um, how many eyes did your girlfriend have? <laughs> Just real quick. If it was two, we're having a real tough time trying to find one. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. heads up. Like, are you sure he, she didn't have just one? He literally puts his hand in the blood of his girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> like, in the, like, in the uh, wall. Uh, like, uh, yeah, and he like that's a crime scene. He tries picking her up out of the dead body stew out that is the, the bathtub bath. now. Yep. Yeah. She's still in her towel or in her robe, though. She's modest, yeah. she is. Yeah. <laughs> Good for her. Well, the other thing that was crazy about it, though, too, is how much blood he used up of hers to pretty much paint the walls that he was coming after him next. <laughs> I know, he leaves a long message. Okay, Yeah. here's my question, right? I get why Pinker writes in the blood, because he's crazy, he's a fucking serial killer, right? Yeah. Yeah. Later, why does, Allison, why does Allison write in blood as well? I don't know. Which is like, <laughs> slap him, Jonathan, please. Don't know. Uh, yeah, it doesn't make any sense. <sighs> Again, there's little plot holes that we can't. Understand. All right, well, we shaving can't. cream would have would have fallen off because it was so steamy in the bathroom. She couldn't find any of her stuff, so yeah. she didn't have her lipstick to write it on. Yeah, but how would she even have any more of her blood left over yeah, if it all was on that laptop? She was packing. And why did everyone else look like a zombie in that whole zombie death march thing at the end? Yeah, but she was like getting cleaner as it went by. She was trying to get some, Paul. Yeah. Okay, okay, so looking like a zombie animal. trying to fuck a human. <laughs> Come on. Now. So the other ones were like, "Well, I just get to." Fuck zombies now, I guess. Yeah. So I just let myself go. You know, baby Ted Raimi was a virgin in this movie. Yeah. Like, he probably oh. has a name for the movie. We can't just keep calling him Ted Raimi. Well, I did you. It was like, Pac Man. It was Pac Man. Yes. He was Pac Man because he says Pac Man liked He's you like, too much. Pac Man's over there making fun of me with Coach. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go, Rhino. I, I keep forgetting that they're supposed to be in college because yeah. I, so many, so much of it. I'm like, it, it. There's so many like high school adolescent yeah. like feelings guy love talks yeah. <laughs> everyone around me gets murdered rhino <laughs> everyone you know is dying <laughs> oh i do oh, love that horace pinker's favorite line is eat this sometimes he preludes it with you hungry <laughs> sometimes <laughs> but not many times what was he talking about though when he throws the bitch down the stairs at the cops <laughs> Yeah. He throws that woman at the stairs. He goes, "You boys hungry? You hungry? Oh, when they're, Eat this!" When and they're, he when they're her down to, the stairs. Yeah, when they're going out to the okay. When when the stupid mom was like, "Rod, what are you doing?" He's like, "I'm you, you dumb bitch. I'm trying to save you." I know. I yeah. I know. Why did she come back to be like, "Do something"? I'm like, "Bitch, what are you doing? Why are you back here?" <laughs> she was loyal. She's Whoa. like, "All right, well, he's gonna help. That's two against one." I'm like, no, no, just get out of here. Like she just had said, like, "Don't hurt my baby." I'm like, "No, bitch, that's your chance to go get your baby." And run <laughs> like, yeah. you don't just say do something no you you do something and you get your ass out of there <laughs> oh. oh is that okay sorry All but right. they go across on a dangerous foot chase and jonathan practices his parkour skills and jumps across the building parkour. <laughs> oh my goodness oh and then he's they finally the cops catch him yeah, they point. catch him. Yeah. He's about to, uh, yeah, he's about to stab Jonathan. But then the cops come up. Finally, come up the fucking stairs. Mm-hmm. One of those could have jumped across. And why didn't Rhino go with him too? I know Rhino probably could have made that jump. Rhino yeah, could have jumped. Could, if, if Jonathan, Jonathan could make it, Rhino can. Make I mean, they're that. both college athletes. Yeah. He could have made that jump. Yeah. Yeah, fuck. Okay, one legged fucking Pinker made it. Right. I mean, well, oh. he had the he had the the fucking uh, the ladder. Oh ladder, yeah, he walked right. across he, the ladder. He ran across, mm-hmm. but yeah, they could have made it. Mm-hmm. But anyway, Jonathan decides he wants to see Pinker die. And Don's like, okay, I'll get us box seats. We've deserved this. Would you guys go to a, a execution? 
song? Would you go no. to one? No. I don't think it, no, I don't think I'd be able to. Because, I mean, regardless of what it is, even if the dude deserves to die, you're still watching somebody die. Yeah. Mm. That's that's the thing with me. It's like, you're, regardless of what it is, whether it's lethal injection, electric chair, or whatever it need be, you're still watching the person die. Regardless if they deserve it or not, it's yeah. still your... You're still seeing somebody get killed right in front of you, pretty much. Yeah, you're for watching the, most, the end the of part. someone's life. Yeah, yeah, which I, yeah, I don't think I don't think I'd be able to do it. No, yeah. Paul. I'm with you, Saul. I want to watch someone die slowly <laughs> over several years. <laughs> I would tell them no. If, if something ever happened, it was up to me. And, like the judge asked, like if it was a crime against my family or you know whatever. Right? I'd be like, no. Yeah. I want life in prison. Just every day, they're gonna do the same shit and know that there's no escape. And that's hell. And if there is a hell, then they'll go to the hell after that. And what if yeah. real hell exists and real hell is just they're still in prison, like for eternity. Mm. So they have hell to look forward to. But then when they get to hell, like, haha, just kidding. You're just going to do the same thing you did for the rest of your life. And see, I would, <laughs> I would also say no. But because of this whole shit that happens in this movie, how Pinker's like, Oh, and he gets he gets know, under yeah. Jonathan's skin, and I'm like, no. If somebody wrongs me, there's no way that I'm giving any more energy to them whatsoever. And going to yeah. their their death is giving a piece of myself away. And I'd be like, no, fuck them. Like they can look out and see nobody. I don't care. They they can die alone for all I care. Fuck I don't them. know. Okay, <laughs> if if I hated someone enough, and they were gonna die, then I don't know. I, I'd have to have like the most extreme hate that I could ever have. No, nope. and no, see, that because, would be energy because, that you're giving to that no, person. No, because if I had that much hate, then I would stand there and look at them in their eyes as they died. I'd have to have that much fun. <laughs> yep, so, so, yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's why I say I hate you enough that I just want you to waste away for life in prison because chances are someone either is gonna kill you or something's gonna happen to you, or either way, like you have to eat that shit. Like, the food yeah. and all that stuff like mm. we'll see and i would just yeah. be like no nope, i don't, I don't know, care man. enough about you to see you die fucker. okay but but Boom. here's my horror psa i guess for this movie all right if there's ever a like a serial killer or anyone because if horror movies taught me anything if there's anyone like that that like wants to die then yeah don't kill them because there's something they made a pact with somebody whether it was yeah. the TV or the devil or something, they always come back. There's how many horror movies where they come back? Like, God, oh, don't kill us. The Lou Diamond Phillips one, I think it was like the first power. He catches <laughs> he catches some guy and like this nun calls him. She's like, don't kill him, don't kill him. They they give him the chair anyway and he comes back as a spirit. Mm-hmm. Boom. Happens all the fucking time in movies. Don't kill yeah. him if they want to. Okay, yes. here is my horror question movies about that whole thing. Not so much his don't kill him thing that you were talking about. But like they talk about, you hear from the guards that he didn't even want a last meal. He just wanted the TV. Right. So I get, (laughs) I get that he had the TV set, but who the fuck gave him the jumper cable? I know. Is that part of the last request? Hey, you know, where where do you draw the line at, at, you know, death row last request? I mean, meal is one thing. Like you can get what you want. Like I get that fine, whatever. But like, I want a TV and jumper cables, a bunch of candles and my voodoo books. Right, and a bunch of spoons to make a... Yeah, and I'm like, um... <laughs> Why the fuck would you agree to that? Well, okay, well, well, A, freedom of religion. You can ask for all those things. You see, oh, it's in the true. Constitution. He's like, on my voodoo books, I practice voodoo. Or practice whatever the fuck you practice, right? <laughs> I need voodoos and candles to do my own ceremony. Hmm? You can't deny him that. The jumper cables are a little bit I tricky. I don't know. Like, he's the... the I don't get the fucking jumper cables. The jumper cables, yeah. I was like, uh, though I know those aren't in fucking TVs, so where the yeah. fuck did he get those from? Where did a death row inmate maybe in the 80s, get the jumper cables maybe in from? The, maybe in the 80s, there were jumper cables in all TVs. We just didn't know because we were stupid kids. And I also, I, I really need explanation behind the giant lips that just say, you got it, baby. Like, you is this, it, baby. Is this a TV demon? Is it a TV god? Like, like, what is I know, this? Uh, I need uh, some backstory on these giant pair of lips that just pop out of the TV when he says, give it to me. I, I literally wrote down for that scene. I wrote, Dembella, <laughs> arrow, <laughs> you got it, baby. Because <laughs> that's basically what happened. It was he like chucking is... himself into the electricity. Yeah. He did. He did. And then he gets electrocuted. Not before that he makes a priest petter ass joke real quick. He does. He does. Yeah. He so does I'm like, okay, is that funny joke. or is that sad that even in 1989 they were making those jokes and we're just now getting down to doing shit about it? Are we, though? Uh, Are we really doing shit about quote it? Quote, unquote. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I digress. 
So Pinker goes Again, in yep. and basically explains what we already knew because the plot holes were so big. We stepped right into them. We saw that Jonathan was Pinker's son from the very beginning when we learned that he was beaten and left for dead. Yeah. Do we ever really know that, though? For sure. Like, yeah, we, we I never mean, confirm really. it. You never, I mean, you never get any confirmation of that. Like, he could have made that whole thing up. He for like, sure literally. could have. Because well, Jonathan never asked about it did. anymore either. Yeah. Well, Lieutenant Dan kind of said that he made that up. He was just trying to fuck with you. Yeah, but I like, feel like he would have said that either way. Yeah. If yeah. he was like, if it was true, and I'm thinking, be like, well, you're old enough. It's true. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. they're so you'll probably kill people too, you son of a bitch. There just so happens to be execution troubles, and don't you just hate that when I love how like the, the warden guy is like troubles. like scared shitless, and he's like, "Doctor, go check him out." Know, he's like, like, "I'm not going there by myself." This tiny like, woman go in there. <laughs> And then when he looked up and I'm like, yeah, no need for a doctor. He's, He's looking alive. up at you. Just flip the switch again. Yeah, just go again. Like, oh, just wait, wait. swing that thing back over and flip it over. The whole point of this thing is for him to be fucking dead. He's looking up wait. at you drooling. Not dead. No wait, need for the doctor. Just, let's go back just a little bit because I want to talk about how when he got electrocuted by the TV, how the two guards were like, we're going to get fucking in trouble if this guy gets d- is dead before we even bring him over here. I know. Trying to do gives, CPR, I'm like, no. Gives, <laughs> okay, I I took no. that as like, okay, that's probably like a law or something. Like you have to, like you can't just let them die. Like it's probably like a law or something. <laughs> but is it a law to, that you have to give mouth to mouth, or that you have to take them gave, somewhere to get? Like, well, okay, <laughs> where are you gonna take them? Because even the after, no, okay. Where are you going to take them? Because even after they say take these guys to the infirmary, then later they're like, get the ambulance for the doctor. And they're like, oh, it already left. It took the other two guys. So I'm like, obviously, there's nowhere on this fucking prison that they can take anyone. He's Just put him in the chair. If he dies, just put him in the chair. Roll on two. It's no. going to look like he just got electrocuted anyway. They're like, he's just sleepy, folks. Yeah, they're going to fucking weekend at Bernie's electrocute him? Is that, yeah. that's your huge plan? To like, you don't know. It'll save a couple fingers and a lip if we just like, all right, let's just walk him okay. over. Okay. I, I used to think that humans were more smart than that. <laughs> But apparently, no. People would fall that for whole, it. I swear, if somebody weakened at Bernie's, somebody's because of our fucking podcast. I'm, that's on you, Angie. Mm-hmm. That whole the whole CPR thing was comical to me because he bites down the dude's lip and overstretches it and bites off that other dude's fingers. Oh, finger looking good. Yeah, we yeah. got all yeah. the... <laughs> finger looking good. His one-liner and delivery of his one-liners were on par with Jack Frost for me at points. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah they were pretty rough. Finger they were looking good. They were so campy and so yeah. cheesy. Maybe that's why he didn't want to talk about this movie. Maybe. I mean, yeah. I, I get it. Uh... <laughs> And then they so, just can't find his body all of a sudden after after he takes over the doctor. Did no one look behind the door? Not one. So guard. I take I take back what I said <laughs> last week about fool hiding behind the shower curtain. Like who the fuck is it? It's only a kid with the all right. Well, sorry. I guess in real life you can hide behind the door and nobody would look. So why wouldn't the shower curtain work? Right. I guess. <laughs> oh, but then his body goes up in smoke. <laughs> After he falls down, literally, literally up and it's smoke. spontaneous human combustion because he probably didn't fart. And uh, I doubt that was the reason. <laughs> That's why you get too much gas and you spontaneously combust. <sighs> so you, everyone, PSA, you need to fart. Don't do it in front of me. We just you got to do it. But then Jonathan's girlfriend's back and he's gonna be in trouble. <laughs> You're really going there right now. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> fucking stop him, Jonathan, is what she should have yeah, said. Instead, like, she was Jonathan. too. She was thinking while she was horny. That was she the problem. Was. So she was totally, oh, she had unfinished business. I so love, she needed to come and finish this business. I love how he. she pops out of the shower and Jonathan's first response is, go back in there. <laughs> well, there's all that blood and shit that was on her. Like, okay, you don't belong on her. Go back in there. Go back in there. Go back in there, Alice. He was worried about getting his deposit. They already cleaned up all that blood the first time. He's like, well, this is on me. Yeah. No, because he, he hadn't decided to move until after he sees the ghost of Allison. <laughs> he was prepared to live in that murder den. The murder house. <laughs> but he didn't yeah. decide to move until he was like, fuck, this place is haunted. I got to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> She That's what his ass alone. was like. Okay, I gotta go. It's time to go. I got a stage it five is, yeah. flinger here. It is, li- <laughs> it is literally every time that she comes out, he's like, ah! Oh, Allison, <laughs> like, oh, get shit. out of here. You stupid idiot. It I just. Like he was more, it seemed like he was almost more scared of her than he was of Horace. 
I know, like he was all up in Pinker's face at any point, but then Allison, even when she got, got all dolled up and like not bloody and all that later, he was like, ah! No, the funniest <laughs> thing is when Allison is like speeding through the water, chasing after him. <laughs> that shot actually looks pretty creepy. Just the way that you can tell she's on like some sort of platform or something because uh. she's just like stiff, but she's just. I can't zooms help. through the water. I was like, she's just like boating to him. Yeah. <laughs> Come back, Jonathan, with her arm it's all the, stretched. It's, it's so the, ridiculous. It's the nuns on roller skates things. Like yes. When we were the 80s. Yeah. Like, yeah it gets oh. completely that, in, but in water. And it was like, you fucking idiot. I wanted her to just yell at Jonathan like a lot. Like yeah, She should have. She needed She to. was too gentle with him. And maybe it's because she was cursed with perpetual horniness because of she never how got, she died. She never got the D, yeah. man. So, yeah, because yeah, I, I literally just wanted her to be like, Jonathan. Jo- Jonathan. <laughs> Jonathan. You're so fucking horny. <laughs> Baby, she yeah. she's yeah, she's just drunk. Well, that's what the afterlife does to you when you're stewing in your own decomposing body meat stew. Body meat stew. <laughs> Shut up, <laughs> Jonathan. Are you gonna give me the show? We haven't even talked about the most ridiculous part of the movie, and that is, is there the only end. one ridiculous no, part? The, dr- the most ridiculous, ridiculous times in this movie is after Horace starts to jump around in people. So he goes from the doctor, oh, yeah. the, the the prison doctor, to a cop. And then the cop, Pastori, okay, wait, wait. which Jonathan says hundreds of times. Wait, hold on. <laughs> yeah. I love how they're all standing outside the prison, right? And they're just like, oh, well, whatever. And like after the doctor and drives away. And then you see that like explosion happen. And Jonathan runs, and I'm like, why are you the only one running over there? Like, yeah. shouldn't anyone else somebody, be concerned? Somebody should care. And as soon as they get there, his dad just like, what the fuck's the matter with you? He's dead. Look at this fucking thing. Like, <laughs> I know. Oh, but yeah, so. Whoa. But yeah, then we get the 112. Pastori! Pastori! And it looks like it pains Jonathan. Pastori! <laughs> like he's chewing his own face when he does it. He has very weird diction. He does. Uh, um, but the best part of this whole movie and the most ridiculous over the top thing is when Horace Pinker takes over this little girl. <laughs> she, okay. Yeah. No, okay. I wrote down that I'm okay. My awards were um, the little girl was the best Pinker um, as far yeah. as like just the badass like performance of Pinker. Yeah. Um, I wrote down Coach wins the best like dramatic. Pinker performance. Oh yeah, for <laughs> sure. He gave it his all. Because yeah. I'm like, damn, Coach showed just some range in that scene. Mm, the I little, love- I know oh, the little girl is my favorite. If for nothing else, yeah. you have to watch this fucking movie for the two minutes that the little girl's like, mm-hmm. fuck you, <laughs> like yeah. shit like that, spitting on people. Not just that though, but she remembers that he has a limp, and she starts walking around with the limp. They that's just do, that's yeah. just Pinker that, because he's in him. The yeah. Lamp, yeah. Like, so even even though he gets to be like you live on forever as electricity or whatever the fuck, he can't get away from he having can't a limp. Get away from the limp. Like sorry, it, it's it's oh, it's you, as you were. You gotta love though when she starts driving the tractor around. She's like, "Move you piece of shit!" And then like, yeah. Jonathan runs over, and you clearly see like she just jumps off, and then her stunt double runs away. <laughs> oh, that stunt double scene! The I'm thing like, that oh. cracked me up about when she got on the uh, the bulldozer is how Jonathan's walking, and all of a sudden it comes out of nowhere. I'm like, how can you not fucking see that, let alone hear it? Right, <laughs> like it almost runs him over. I'm like, nope. Yeah. That thing was like a stealth bulldozer. I'm like, what the fuck? And I just lost it. I started laughing my ass. <laughs> I wrote that little Amanda was the best pinker. Come on, you fucker, yes. move. Oh. I thought it was funny. Uh, uh, I wrote down college athlete versus one-legged TV repairman running in the park. I'm like, yeah, mm-hmm. Jonathan should have been gone in like two minutes. Yeah. But yeah. instead, he was just bouncing back and forth and like getting shot. Like he, There was no reason he needed to get shot. Like He was way faster than... Pastori probably is as a regular guy, let alone limpy Pinker inside of him or whatever, right? There was a lot of he things. He even makes fun of him. Uh, yeah. He even makes fun of, of, of Pinker, or well, not Pest, of the cop, where he says, Pinker story. You wish you would have picked a better body. <laughs> yeah. He's like, don't you wish you picked a better body because he made, like, he couldn't keep yeah, up with Yeah, a him? guy dying in the hospital is probably not the best to, like, you couldn't, between the hospital and uh, Jonathan's house, you couldn't have found somebody a little faster. No, and a then guy on a motorcycle jumps, maybe. But like, then he jumps from like four people in the span of like two and a half minutes. 
Yeah. Maybe he didn't know how at first. And then it's so weird because like he goes from Pastori to the jogger to the little girl to the mom. Well, he didn't help himself anybody when he shot the jogger in the back. Yeah. And then that he... was Wes Craven's son, by the way. Was it? Yeah. Nice. But then he goes into the mom for no reason because then he jumps into the craziest construction worker I've ever seen. Yeah. And was that the... Who was a guitarist for Alice Cooper, I believe. Was it? Okay. Yeah. yeah. He had that look because I was like, that yeah. man is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it worked that he was like a construction worker looking guy. Yeah. He had glorious locks. Did you yeah. see the yeah, man? He, he was a... He looked a little like Troy Palomalu a little bit. It was a long... Like, or like Slash is long black hair curly a little bit Mm. we're gonna welcome to our 80s rocker hair metal band (laughs) podcast if you're just joining us jonathan calls the team uh, in though because he needs some help and he he asked uh, the coach to go get his diving mask when the when the when the construction worker throws the pickaxe with the 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 heart necklace necklace, right yeah yeah. The only thing that can bring him out of the dream world. I, I mean, the electricity world. Um, no, the, the human world, right? No, bring, he's bring him out of the dream world or electricity world into the regular world. But no, world. he is electricity. I know. I know. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> okay. It doesn't matter. They're bringing God him out. God cross-eyed. They're bringing him out. And they're bringing yes. him in at the same time. The heart-shaped time. necklace apparently so no, kicks him out when, of people's bodies. When, he th- when the fucking construction guy throws the pickaxe, I was like, he almost hit those birds up there. I'm like, if he would have hit that bird, that would have been like, there's nothing they could do. Like, that was the yeah. one take that they the could do with this fucking pickaxe. Like, we we it's like, somebody's got to go swim in there. Like, no, because later when Jonathan actually does go, like Peter Berg got hypothermia in that fucking lake scene later nice. when they filmed at night. So, yeah, no one was going to go in that fucking water for the pickaxe. So missed a chance oh, to kill goodness. some birds. Uh, fuck birds. Yeah, I love those. And then they're fucking, they're idiots when they want to go back into the water because it's at night. Like, who the fuck is even going to be able to see even with the dive gear at night in the water? I know. Uh, it, here's another quick horror PSA for anyone out there, right? If you're waiting for somebody that had to go to your house and you're trying to hide from a serial killer and they're an hour and 15 minutes late, yeah, they're fucking dead. They're dead. Yeah. yeah. The serial yeah. killer got when, them. When they say they're going to be there in half an hour and it's an hour and 15 minutes, they're dead. They're dead. Yes. Um, like, stop waiting. But no, like, I love waiting. I love their little um, Rhino and Jonathan's little like love fest that they have at the lake. And they're like their bromance. They do. They, they're talking about guy love and how much they love yeah. each other. And they're just hey. friends. <laughs> they're teammates. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There was a real too much, too much like teammate uh, propaganda in this. Film, it was. I think, especially at the end, because I'm like, yeah, I've played football before. And yeah, I wouldn't do half of this shit for most of the people. Yeah. So. But does just Jonathan go back to his house, or does Rhino go with him? I don't remember. Rhino ends up going back later. Rhino follows like? him because remember. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, later, yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah, has yeah, to. Yeah. He has to bust gotcha. him out of it because yeah, I I'm friends with a lot of people, but he clotheslined a cop form earlier <laughs> when they go to see the woman. Yeah. Um, and then he. Not only breaks him out of this fucking cop car, but doesn't like oh he does something else I thought too. Like doesn't he hit another cop later or something? Yeah. Like yeah. I'm like, Rhino would have been shot, man. Yeah, like, he for these sure cops would have been fucking been. around. Like I'm like, you're my boy and all, Jonathan, but I gotta draw a line somewhere. Um, like, I'm not getting shot over your dumb ass. Damn it, we got a game tomorrow. Yep. <laughs> but we find Coach has been taken over by Pinker. And now girl, Ghost Girlfriend is back and tries to get the coach out with the power of love. Yeah. That's literally he what He tries happens. to will him out of it. <laughs> no, it was, was that the Care Bear scene? Yes, because I came in. Yes. <laughs> Ghost Girlfriend comes to help with coach with the willpower and then Care Bear stares him away. But not, not before the coach is stabbed to death. Yeah. Yeah, she can't Care Bear stare well, him away. It's maybe maybe after. she had to charge it up before she could just unleash, you know, the the chest beam. She if you don't know what we're in. talking about by the Care Bear thing, she gives a whole like chest beam through yeah. from her chest. Yeah. It, it it lights she it, goes, it hits this light, <laughs> and then it comes out no, of her she's chest. Like, Fuck you, Pinker. <laughs> that's what happened. Oh my goodness. Yeah, as soon as I saw that, I that's what I said. I put my hands up in the air and I went, Care Bear Stare. Care Bear Stare. Oh, my goodness. I love how, how much- um, in, in that scene where um, 
what I think it was it when was he in coach or was he in the dad at that point? But there's a part where Pinker in somebody or maybe just by himself was like, I made a mess on the floor in the closet or whatever. And that's when he finds Theodore Amy, yes. Pac Man dead or whatever. I just wrote down yeah. like he just goes in there and it has that shot where he's like, Oh, you broke my goggles. I'm like, Oh, you're yeah, he all did. this blood. Like, he was he was like, Oh, my diving mask. There it is, and you <laughs> broke it. God damn it. Not that we couldn't have gone to the store and just bought another one just instead of having one. to go back to the place where the murderer knows that you live. I know. I'm like, what's there probably a... waiting for you to get there. Where did you get said diving? Also, just Pac Man could just one. go sniff your underwear drawer. <laughs> yeah. Because it was weird. He's like, I'll get you clothes. I'm like, don't touch my clothes. No, please. the creepiest thing to me in this whole movie was when dad gets taken over by Pinker. And I yeah. know, I know that like they were just like, do a crazy smile and he was trying to do the face but like that man doing his crazy smile i was like he is going to murder me in my sleep that is the creepiest <laughs> thing i've ever so seen so that that was the most convincing thing in this yes movie. i was like if that if i had ever seen anybody smile at me like that i would be convinced that they were about <laughs> to murder me I'm like that man is dangerous well if he if it comes out that he was a serial killer this whole time then we can refer to this like angie knew angie knew the like whole Angel. time <laughs> i think it's okay. years I think it's funny when Rhino and Jonathan are having their their bro love moment um, by the lake or whatever, and Rhino has a line where he's like, "You know I could fuck you up, right?" He does when he <laughs> takes a swing. Jonathan takes a swing at him, and I think Rhino was probably a little more eloquent. He was like, "You know what I could do to you?" Yeah, but he's basically like, "You know I could fuck you up, right?" He does. He does. He's like Jonathan. Man, you're getting a little big here. <laughs> we teammates and all, but I can fuck you the fuck up. Don't make me knock you down a peg or two, because I will have to do that. Don't make Rhino cream your ass. Oh, but oh. then, and then we get- Don fakes out Pinker at the TV stand, which we've already talked about the TV yeah. stand. The, <laughs> the TV yeah. tower. The TV tower. Oh, it's the so, TV tower. Again, it's like I said, so that bad. could have ended the movie, but no, you didn't. You still had another half hour of all the bullshit that we're about to talk to in a little bit because it just like i said up to this point i was okay with the movie but everything following that i'm like what the fuck did i just <laughs> wait 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 real quick when when they're arresting jonathan after the dad comes in and he sees coach's body and pac-man's body and all that and he's like arrest him and he was like you know so after he was like you know i had to call backup you know arrest him and all that stuff the cop that's arresting him, and I'm like, why does this cop need his Miranda rights, like, little notebook? I'm like, was this the first time, like, you this ever did them? It's his first day, okay? I'm like, because I'm like, it's literally, like, the actor's like, I can't remember these lines. I don't, I don't know. The you one. have the right to a cheeseburger. You have. Shit, I fucked it up again. You have the <laughs> right to the, fu- the uh, yeah. So oh. it was terrible. It was okay. Then Jonathan goes <laughs> dream swimming while his team commits a felony together. I wrote down uh, committing crimes is where I draw the line for teamwork. I love though. I do love the line, and I wrote it down because it's such a great line. When the one of the teammates is like, "But that's a felony," and Rhino goes, "No, that's a lock. Pick it." <laughs> like I'm like, that's right. <laughs> Rhino is down. Like he is, he's ride or die. That's who Rhino yeah. is. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but yes, Jonathan goes dream swimming, and his dead girlfriend finds him, and then that's when we have the the boating after Jonathan scene. Oh. I, wait, he he was like, uh, "You're not alive, Allison." And I put down her reply should have been, "So I'm here, and I'm horny." <laughs> she like she did say, "So I'm here." And she did. They, and then so they started making out. And she could have finished with, and I'm horny. And that would have totally worked out. <laughs> I know. I love how she, like, boats him to the, well, she boats at him so he swims to the shore. And then they just, like, seriously start making out hardcore, like, all romantically they on, were about to get on the, the shoreline. You were, two seconds like, ago, you were frightened as shit from her again. Like, you screamed like a bitch again, yeah. tried to swim away, and then she caught you and was like, I'm here, Jonathan. And then you just started making out, like... Yeah, they were about to get down. He got on top of her, and they were about okay. to get down. But then everybody else came up. Jonathan's sending mixed signals. Maybe he that's is. what it is. Yeah, mm. he's confused. Oh, Jonathan. He's got a confused, weird death boner, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, the confusion I kind of get because he wakes up and gets attacked by his fucking a recliner. Killer recliner <laughs> is what I wrote down. That has eyeballs. Oh, yes. Eyeballs. Yeah. I was like, oh, did we need the eyeballs? Did we need those? Oh, was it? 
the the TV evangelist that was on the TV when he was in that the, dude cracked me when off. he was on the killer recliner before it comes alive, whatever. Yeah. The, the weirdest thing is, he's like, check your perimeter. Yeah. Check your perimeter. I'm like, that is code for watch your ass. Yeah. Like, that's literally like yeah. military code. I think, like, check your perimeter. Like, watch your ass, fool. Yeah. Literally watch your ass because you're sitting on Pinker. You're sitting on him. Yeah. yeah. Shocker! And then we get the whole absurdity of them jumping into the TV and flipping through channels of everything that was going on. Yep. The Willie and then the, the other has a trip. Uh, well, the other thing that was funny, too, my favorite part of the movie is where they come out of the TV into that one family's house. Yeah, and the mom's just like, what are you doing? Oh, yeah, the fat mom. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah. And then the dad goes, like, the dad doesn't Where's go. Where's the cheese spread? But the dad where's doesn't the go cheese? after No, that was, his, that was the only line the yeah. dad had was like, where's the cheese spread? Yeah, but no, I'm saying, like, the, he and doesn't he just go walks after over there. anybody, but the lady's like, get him. Get him, honey, get him. <laughs> and <laughs> like, he just, what is he, he doing? He just walks over there like he's going to ask nothing. them. Hello, do you guys know where the cheese spread is? Yeah. Like, why are you in oh this my people's house? And then they, they just jump that, back into the house, the TV again. They destroy the whole house. That whole they scene. Do all, they just made a mess of the house, and they're like, well, talk about interactive TV, and then they jump back in. That was a very, like, late 80s, 90s kind yeah. of scene, just yeah. to have, like, that you break the fourth wall kind of thing. I've heard about everybody. audience participation. Yeah. Yeah. This is ridiculous. Uh huh. No, the, the whole scene of them fighting and, like, the whole news thing where they start fighting in the news and like everything that reminded me of like old, um, like WrestleManias when they would have like the intercontinental championships. It's all you probably yeah. know what I'm talking about where they would just have like whoever the last person has the belt at the end of the show is the champion kind of thing. <laughs> and I'm like, they're just fighting everywhere. And it's just getting like, it was over the top, like wrestling like that was. No, it was Mike oh TV on acid. Yeah. Mike TV and Willy Wonka's Chocolate kept... Factory on acid. It would have been better if I got to see Mike TV and Willy Wonka fight through the different channels where mm. Willy Wonka's is like, you stupid shit, and like beats the crap like, out of him. Get the fuck out of my TV thing. I made it for me. Oh, but then he defeats him with the remote. Yeah. And a camera. And Well, here's the well, here's the thing that got me at the, the at Sacred that Heart. Because you know how you have the what is it, the the villain rambling about their plot and everything? Well, yeah, this time like, they have the hero. The, they have the hero rambling about how he beat him, and now he's going to do this, and then I know. He and, ends up the- and why was Pinker like your watch is running slow, stupid ass? I'm like, why would you even tell him? And why was yeah. he? And able why would you to, know that? But why was Jonathan able to rewind Pinker through the crimes and feelings later? Because like he's like, do you remember being a victim? And like he pushes right. rewind, and then he goes through all that stuff. I was like, what, what is, why? Well, he was controlled by the remote yeah. at that point because he was in the TV. But why was yeah. he able to go back through the murders he committed as a human? We don't, I, don't I don't know. know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Because he's primetime baby. Okay, so Jonathan yeah. defeats him so, with the remote and maybe a felony or two with his friends, and he is then birthed from the TV, spit back into the human world, and all is well that ends well. It's funny how he defeats him by just turning off the TV. I'm like, really? That's it? And they totally left it open. Yeah, they like, did. You could totally yeah. see that they were hoping this would be set up for more. Yeah, but no. Yeah. So, yeah. All right, uh. so... Let's get Mitch Pelleggi's people back on the on the email, and we'll pitch them our <laughs> long-awaited sequel to Shocker, Shocker Two. Shocker Two. No electric boogaloo because it literally is electric. Oh my! <laughs> no, I'm good. Uh, it's electric. Do, 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 oh do, 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 do. Okay, Paul. Final thoughts. Wow. Uh, watch this movie just to say that you've seen it, and it's batshit crazy. It is a lot of fun. I'm not going to lie. It does not make any goddamn sense whatsoever. So don't expect it to. This is definitely not Craven's best. Um, but it's a lot of fun. It's it's weird to see Mitch Pileggi in this in this role if you've never seen him besides um, X-Files and, you know, some of the other things that he's done. Because he's always kind of like that just clean cut kind of like government looking guy in other things. I know he's been, you know, tons of other things since X-Files. But always kind of that same character. So if you've never seen this movie watch this movie and it's just it's weird to see him in this role um little amanda is the best part of 
the pinker <laughs> transitions will come. I don't know. Transition. Um, but yeah, it's got a lot of weirdness, a lot of just there's some good cheesy campy 80s-ness in here and yeah, it's it's a it's a fun ride. So, give it a watch, but don't expect the best. Saul, your final thoughts? Um, I I'm in the same boat as Paul. It's it's not bad that it's bad it's bad the cheesiness and the -the over-the-topness and the stuff that doesn't make sense is what makes this a must watch for me just because of how batshit crazy this movie is it just jumps around all over the place even though it's freaking west craven of all people yeah it's not his best movie but this movie is just all over the place if you were a fan of west craven you'll i don't even know if you'll like it if you're a fan of west craven just knowing that it's his but it's it's all over the place. Watch it if you can, and just don't expect too much of it other than batshit craziness. I agree. I say you have to watch this movie because it is batshit crazy, and it's such a time capsule, like 89, 90s. I mean, you got chain smoking, you got the one-liners, death by TV, ghosts of girlfriends past, waterbeds, little girls cussing. This movie has everything. I mean, you've got to have fun with it. It's ridiculous. If you grew up in the 80s or seen TV from 80s, 90s, you're going to love this movie because of the pure ridiculousness of it. And you're just you're going to feel like you've seen this before even if you haven't because it's got that feel to it it's so ridiculous it's one of i wouldn't even say this is a wes craven movie had i not known that he had made this movie but it is fun go watch it give it a go it's got its own 80s metal theme song. yes i mean come yes. on it's got a bunch of 80s songs in there too those those 80s hair band music in there. Yeah, I think there's some Megadeth. I think there's a, yeah, there's a, there's a few. Do you remember those like old commercials with like the the, the ballads of the 80s? You know, remember? I remember. <laughs> like, I remember. It's basically <laughs> its own soundtrack I remember, of that. Uh, there was monster ballads, yeah. which were like the, like the extreme, like, mm-hmm. you know, more than words, stuff like that. And then there was like, um, Oh, there was another one was like monster metal or something. It was yeah. all like this kind of like shocker, mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. <laughs> the soundtrack has to be one so, of those. So CDs I think you should, world. you got to do the shocker scream like that one time for the podcast. Go ahead. Saul. I got to do the shocker. There you go. Right, uh-huh. Shocker. <laughs> there you go. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's it for this week in shocker. And next week we'll be doing Wes Craven's Serpent in the Rainbow with Bo- with Bill, Bill Pullman. Pullman. Who's like everything? Everything. He's the president, for fuck's sake. Anyway. No. He's, what's the call it from? Spaceballs. He is. Lone Star. Lone Star. There you go, Lone Star. <laughs> <laughs> we you my shit. sister's cousin's roommate's <laughs> next door neighbor. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> you can check us out on Facebook, Twitter. I'm a mog. I'm my own best friend. Sorry, I can't. Oh, you run up space We're going to go into space balls. I know. Welcome to oh, space shit. balls, the podcast. Uh-huh. Pod balls. You can check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can support us on Patreon by going to patreon.com backslash scary nerd. You can check out horror entertainment news at scarynerd.com. You can email us with comments, questions, concerns at podcast at scarynerd.com. Make sure you like, subscribe, share, tell your friends, listen to us, all that good jazz. Leave us a review because we love getting reviews. And yes. that's it for all this week. Anything else, guys? Pod balls! <laughs> I'm the saying pod balls. Right. Tell the lady at the bank if you go to the bank, wear a mask, but then tell her. If you want stickers, email us. We have stickers. Yes. We do have stickers. Yes. Email us at podcast at scarynerd.com and we can send you stickers. I will send you two if you promise to put one in a random place. Mm-hmm. Yes. Don't get caught because we're not bailing you out. Yes, <laughs> we don't have money. Anyway, that's it for this week. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.